Welcome to Electronic and Paper Methods of Record Keeping. I'm Molly. And I'm Kavitha. And we're with the Rule Advancement Foundation International, RAFI for short. Today's video is brought to you by the North Carolina Specialty Crop Block Grant Office. Today we're going to talk about different ways to keep records for crop insurance eligibility. We're going to go through two primary methods, paper and electronic. We'll walk through a few examples of paper forms for tracking yield and price. We'll also look into software, apps, and websites for those of you who are feeling more tech savvy about your records. For paper records, there are five rules to keep in mind. First and foremost, keep it simple. There are a ton of options out there, forms, templates, etc., about how to keep records, and it can be overwhelming. What's most important here is to make sure to experiment and figure out what works for you. It doesn't have to be complicated. Complicated isn't necessarily better for your operation. Secondly, keep it handy. Whatever you choose to keep records in, it's really important that it's easily accessible to you. This can be as simple as keeping a notebook on the dash of your truck or by your cooler or somewhere else on your operation where you're going to be swinging by very regularly. We also recommend keeping your records in a Ziploc bag to protect them from the elements. Third, keep it updated. Whenever you do have a sales day or harvest from your property, make sure that you are updating your records as and when that happens. It's gonna be a lot easier to do this day by day than having a bunch of blanks at the end of the season that you need to fill in and try and remember. We highly recommend keeping up with it on a daily basis. It'll be a few minutes at most. Fourth, keep it clear. We recommend connecting your yield data and the, what you're harvesting on your property to where on your property you're harvesting it. This is going to be especially helpful for crop insurance purposes to know which of your fields are being affected by any sort of loss in the future. Our final rule, and probably most importantly, is to date absolutely everything. There's a few techniques for paper record keeping. And as a reminder, in order to be eligible for crop insurance, you need to be tracking yield and price. So to track your yield, you can do this in a few different ways. We recommend just writing right on your farm map. And if you don't know what your farm map is, please look at our first video, Basics of Record Keeping, that goes over how you can obtain a farm map or how you can create your own. It's basically just a visual representation of your farm. You can also keep a binder of forms physically in your truck. Keep them all together and all in one place so they're easy to track. You can also just have a spiral notebook. Very simple, very easy, nothing fancy. And for price, there's a few different components of tracking price. We're going to show you some examples of sales ledgers, but you should also be tracking all your receipts. You don't want to end your season with a huge pile of receipts that you have to then organize and go through at the end of your season. It's much easier to keep track of those receipts on either a daily or weekly basis. Keep them together, put a paper clip on them, put a little sticky note, and you're good to go. Also, if you have copies of contracts with vendors, just make sure you have copies on file so you can refer back to those. Now we're going to walk through a few different sample forms to cover planting, harvesting, and sales that will be helpful to crop insurance eligibility. Here on the planting form, the first rule, as you may remember, is to date it. In addition to that, make sure that you take note of the crop, variety, and field number or row number in which you are planting your product, and make any additional notes about general weather conditions during planting time. The second form that we're going to show y'all is the harvesting form. Again, make sure that the date is on here. Record the field number or the row from which you are harvesting, as well as the crop for, and the variety and the amount that you harvest. The next thing that we recommend putting on there is your harvesting unit. And what we mean by that is what you're actually harvesting in. A lot of folks may use a particular type of bin to harvest your cucumbers. Make sure that if you do that, just keep it consistent. You can note the number of bins that you're using as long as you're using the same kind of bin. Here's an example of a sales form. The first thing you want to do is date it. You're also going to track the crop and variety that you're selling and the market ID. So if you're selling at multiple farmer's markets or a roadside stand in a farmer's market, just make sure you're noting that so you can track those separately. You're going to want to keep track of the measurement unit. So you're probably selling things in bunches or pounds, not maybe the bins that you harvested in. So just make a note of that. And you're going to want to track the price per unit. You're also going to make a note of the quantity that you've brought to market and the quantity left over at the end of the market day. This will give you the quantity that you've sold. It can be kind of tricky to keep track of that during the market day, so that's just an easy way you can keep track of it. In addition to paper records, you can also use electronic means for keeping records for crop insurance. This can include software, apps, and websites. They range in price. Some are free. Some are all the way upwards of a few hundred dollars. Make sure you keep that in mind as you make this investment and find something that's going to really work for you. We're not endorsing any particular products in this video, but here are some that we found that may or may not be useful to your operation. 
None of these products are going to explicitly make records for crop insurance. However, they are going to capture the same kinds of information that you would have to present to an insurance agent to get crop insurance. So some examples. Microsoft Excel is a great basic and accessible option. This is basically just going to help keep track of your expenses and some harvesting and planting information. Very general, very easy. If you want to take it a next step up, QuickBooks is an accounting software that businesses tend to use. This will be a little bit more number heavy and will also help keep track of your overall cash flow for your operation. Veggie Compass was initially created for diversified vegetable growers, so it's made for farmers. So this can be a great option and it can also provide very detailed information. So it does require you to track quite a bit up front. It's going to want you to note your labor, your time, your expenses, and it will give you a very good overall picture of your farm, but it may be a little too complicated if you're just getting started. Square is a sales app that can be used on a phone or tablet. It's that white device that attaches that you can use to run credit cards through. This provides sales summaries so you can keep all that sale information in one place. AgSquare is another record keeping software specifically for farms. It can help you with planning your season and then with also with keeping track of your records during your season. Whichever option you choose, keep in mind you only get out of electronic records what you put in. Be realistic about how much effort you want to put into your records, how often you're going to be updating them, and how much information you actually are going to physically include and choose accordingly. As we mentioned, there are a ton of great options out there for record keeping. Here are some websites to help you get started.